Good evening everybody. It's Tuesday the 22nd of April 2020 and this evening we have a TILT webinar, that's Technology and Language Teaching webinar, with Dr Judith Riffeser, talking about connecting school and home. There's a description there for you to be able to read if you need to have a summary later on, but she's going to be talking about it. We'll be putting a link in the chat window for um, links to our future webinars. It would be lovely to see you. And on that particular page also, you have a link to all of the past webinars. So this is webinar number 51 now. We also really urge you to join ALL, the Association for Language Learning, our association. Um, this really, this event, is because we have people who are volunteers who are willing to behind the scenes put things together, bring people together, and the presenters as well who get no payment for the extra effort that they're putting into presenting to us. It's something which we feel is really um, a great benefit to everybody and it would be great to have more people join us as an association. So if you could write in the chat now to say if you're a member that would be great to encourage others. So we're about to see Judith when she opens up her, when I stop sharing the screen. And she's a faculty member of Goldsmiths University of London, Educational Studies. She's passionate about language learning and cultural studies. You will see that passion when you watch this webinar. Um, she's particularly passionate about practice as research. I've known Judith for a long time and I can obviously remember when she was teaching, being as a head of department and how she really put that into, into practice. And she particularly is interested in the use of film and authentic resources for teaching and learning. And I've added this one, above all, she is a really valued member of our ALL London Committee, and she really is ready to do everything. She is so talented, but she's also very, very happy to be laying out biscuits and serving up tea. So I'm now going to stop sharing my screen and it's over to Judith. So, do, Judith, are you there? Hello, yes. Thank you so much for the uh, wonderful and ever so kind um, introduction. Um, thank you so much for um, hosting this uh, webinar uh, today. To the amazing Helen, Helen, you are the leader of the AWL uh, London Committee and really our champion, not only in the AWL London Committee, but um, uh, really UK wide and beyond. So thank you so much for all you do. Um, a big thank you also to Jill, our tech expert, who's always there to help us out with any tech question we have and to promptly respond uh, in such a lovely manner. Uh, thank you so much also to Linguascope for, uh, for hosting uh, another webinar today and to Heike uh, for, for making this possible. And Really a, a big thank you also to all of you who've joined tonight. Um, I really hope that I can give you some interesting ideas, some uh, points for consideration, uh, something that you might like to try out um, in our now virtual uh, classrooms. And uh, please, please do um, uh, get in touch if you have any questions, if you uh, have any ideas on how to develop uh, any of the resources further. Uh, I always really enjoy hearing um, how you've been further developing uh, resources, so please uh, get in touch via Twitter or email me and uh, let's all continue sharing uh, resources. The session today all the slides will be, of course, available for you as always. Um, I've already created a link so you can then uh, follow that and uh, it will be shared uh, at the end of the session with you and will then also be available afterwards um, for those who cannot join today so you can uh, see all the resources. Uh, also, just to say, uh, so yesterday I did a, a webinar for um, Linguascope specifically on the use of film and there are a few slides that I will share uh, with you again today because some have contacted me and asked whether I could share these again. So at the end of the presentation today you'll also find loads of links to the resources um, on film but also to the other resources and all the uh, links to uh, the resources that I mentioned are embedded so when you click um, on the different resource then they'll pop up for you yeah 
Okay, um, then I think I will proceed to sharing my screen if that's possible. Um, uh, Helen or Joe, may I please ask you to allow me to share my screen? Uh, so you need to do that yourself, uh, Judith. At the bottom of the page, it says share screen. Yes, it uh, unfortunately says uh, that you have uh, deactivated it for me as a participant. Right, okay, so we need to make you co-host. Thank you. Um, Shall right, I, do I, don't, I don't have the right to do that, Helen. Okay, I suppose I agree. It's okay. Apologies, everybody. She is now co-host. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so here, just very briefly uh, for you, if you would like to be in touch, uh, please see here my, um, my Twitter handle and my email address. I said, I always really uh, enjoy hearing from you and I've uh, now also started being on Twitter, so it'll be great to, to kind of hear uh, what you think and, and, um, and to continue sharing resources. Right, can, so I first say, can I just interrupt because I can just, I'm just going to pause the recording a minute. Excellent. Uh, apologies for this. I'm, uh, I'm trying to use a split two screens. So this is a learning experience for me as well. And as you can see, I'm not quite sure how it works yet. So apologies for that. Uh, okay, so I want to show you a couple of different uh, activities that, um, of course, tailored to uh, this new situation that we all found ourselves in. And one of the um, activities that I've um, really enjoyed using in my classroom, so just to give you a bit of a context, I'm an MFL teacher. Um, my, I'm currently teaching mainly German in addition to my teacher training uh, role at Goldsmiths, but I'm also a Spanish specialist. I have tried to in include some um, French resources today as well, and some sort of broader resource that can be really used with any language that hopefully will be useful for you. So one activity that I've recently tried in Teams that has been really useful was this activity. So I would like to use the chat. Um, if you would like to uh, give me a question. So this is an activity, 10 questions. And what I've done in the past is for students to then give me a question. So um, perhaps, uh, Joe, would you be able to help me to just read out one question that a participant might have? Yep, no problem so at all. Ten question. There is a picture underneath. So give me a question. How many squares are there? Oh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. Um, have you? But that's a great question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, is it? Is, is it? A See something, you need to give me a question. If the answer is correct, I will release a, a square. So okay. for example, um, it could be a question, is this a human or a... Okay, is it is it an animal is one of the questions. Um, yes and no, let's go with good question, almost, perhaps. Difficult oh, to say. Right, okay. Uh, are there people in the picture? Uh, no, there are no people in the picture, but it's a great question, so I'll also release another uh, square. Okay. Is it a robot? That's a really good question. It's not a robot, but it's a little bit robot-like, but fantastic, creative question. I'll release another uh, square. Is it a cartoon character? Yes, fantastic, wonderful. Shall we release two squares for this uh, correct um, uh, question? Okay, we've got a great question from Sarah. Is it Olaf? Yes, Three. wonderful, yes. Well done. Well done, excellent. So this is just, um, I use this activity often for uh, pupils to um, ask me questions and of course to recycle language and to uh, sort of retrieve um, knowledge and then also though to build on their previous knowledge because then there are some pupils who might ask oh how do you say this or they go off and and look up words of course now uh, on the internet but it's then sort of linking um, their previous knowledge to uh, new knowledge that they have so this might be something that can be easily set up whether you're teaching um, synchronous or async uh, or uh, in chat um, on uh, teams or uh, OneNote and so on and this really 
uh, brings me to what I promised to do today, which was to uh, show you how you, um, well, something that we um, do at Goldsmiths, uh, following the, um, uh, the approach that really centers around making lessons not crappy with a Y, but crappy O. So what does crappio stand for? It's um, providing a challenge, a real challenge. So when you cover this up, there is a real challenge to it because for example, at the beginning, you had to ask me a question about what is this? So sometimes instead of um, explaining the task, getting them to ask what they actually, what we're doing here and, and what they need to get to in order to release some of the, the squares. And it also gives them a choice on which sort of question they ask, how complex the question will be. It's, it's relevant and real because there is actually a need, there is an information gap. They, they, they want to know what's behind there. Um, and you might make a little competition out of this. There is an audience because they're now kind of listening to each other. You could also um, kind of instill something um, where you say, well, if the question is repeated, then you know, um, you're not getting, if you're doing sort of a competition with points, you're not getting that many points and so on. Um, there is a, a purpose to it because they want to release it. Um, and it's also a little bit personal because I sometimes you know, include uh, pictures of things that we have studied before. So it's also a good way of you perhaps recycling. You know how we have uh, at least, um, depending on where you're from, um, but in the UK, there, I think you, you all agree with me that sometimes we have to teach words like, at least in German, things like Umweltverschmutzung. And we're like, yeah, how can we squeeze that word in? So this is perhaps sometimes a fun way to recycle sort of the odd sort of vocabulary that, that you really need them to, to recycle in some way. There is interaction because um, pupils are listening uh, to each other, are engaging with each other. And there are opportunities to use sort of resources that you have created again and sort of to then not um, make yourself extra um, uh, work, but to actually make use of the resource that you have um, in a variety of ways. So then another activity that you might want to consider is a uh, Pictionary. So here, um, can you recognize the, um, the artists? Let's see, do you know any? Uh, yes, Hundert Wasser, fantastic, yeah. Van Gogh, yeah, yeah, and Dürer, fantastic, great. Um, don't worry about the spelling, that's absolutely great. So um, um, as, you, as you might be aware, a lot of the museums, fantastically, have actually um, opened their museum sort of virtually. So we can uh, access many of them uh, for free. For example, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, um, um, has sort of um, just launched a sort of really beautiful virtual um, sort of exhibition. And what you might want to do is, um, well, there's different um, ways you could go about it. One that I've, um, that I've done before is I would record a description of uh, a picture. And who's to say that you could not use a picture like um, Hundert Wassers, um, for example, or Van Gogh. So to actually, you know, also integrate some cultural knowledge, you might want to do a, a sort of session around um, uh, cultural understanding and having them sort of walk through the museum virtually. Uh, how beautiful is, is that, right? Um, because so, some of... Um, some, some of the pupils might not have the opportunity to actually ever visit those museums um, in, in person. So this perhaps also gives them this experience in, in these troubling times to actually do that as we have access to these resources online. So you might do a recording um, uh, where you describe the picture or you might have uh, also previously asked some of the older pupils, sort of in key stage four, key stage five, whether they wouldn't mind uh, describing, doing an audio of, their, um, of a favorite picture um, of theirs. Uh, and then the, you can share that via a QR code and then the, the pupils actually try to draw from what they, what they listen to. 
So it's a, it's a really, um, I find a really engaging way to get them to really listen. And then uh, we would have them uh, upload either on uh, Padlet or Flipgrid or um, um, OneNote, these different pictures that they drew, and then we share uh, and then, so, and, or you could also have it that you exchange the pictures and then you have them describing to each other what they see and they do another round of, um, of drawing pictures. Uh, and it really works for different uh, age ranges and can be as complex or as simple as you want. You can provide as much scaffolding or, um, or less um, scaffolding. And um, yeah, it provides a sort of uh, quite interesting way uh, I found to kind of get them to do a listening activity which is um, as we all know it's quite a hard skill to develop. Um, another um, resource that I recently um, found is, oh I've shared just Flickr, huh, is um, this one here, and I think uh, Joe, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think I saw um, somebody actually tweeting about having learned this from you about whiteboard um, FI. So this is, um, if you if you know Padlet or uh, Flipgrid, this is another way in uh, another tool to use where pupils can then where you can see what pupils are drawing. And so the activity that I showed before, the Pictionary activity might be um, an activity that you could also use with this tool. And I'm just showing you um, next to the Whitewood Effie, the, uh, the puppy that is from the uh, Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, um, just to kind of give you another idea of a picture that you could use for the Pictionary activity. And finally, um, I'm not sure if you've um, found, I found out about this uh, via social media about um, Senora Cruz um, in the state. She's doing this Hispanic artist photo challenge where um, uh, pupils choose a, a picture and then they're um, recreating it at home. Um, you might do that also in that they actually draw a picture themselves um, and, then, um, and then share it. So then, um, of course, all uh, as I was saying before, all, all edtech related things go to uh, Joe Dale, uh, who um, has been amazing at um, sharing his knowledge. And um, other uh, tools that I found quite uh, interesting to use, Little Red Languages offers animated stories that are available. Um, I'll show you the one in the middle. Uh, I'll return to to that one. Um, that this is a project by Astrid uh, Hulsebosch that is available online as an example, but I'll return to this. And of course, uh, Claire at Lightbulb Languages, she's also made um, loads of uh, videos available. And so has uh, Susie Buell, um, as you might have seen uh, on social media. So uh, and they, they are creating further resources that might be of use to you. Um, another resource that I found really, uh, really interesting and really engaging um, that a um, student uh, of mine, uh, Miss Piggott, has shared with us is uh, Chios Voices. So this is a, an organization that works with uh, refugee um, uh, students in, on the uh, Isle of uh, Chios in Greece. And they have on their website loads of fantastic resources. So for example, here you can see a story that they have developed. And again, this might provide an opportunity for um, your own pupils to develop stories or also to look at some of their stories and to kind of um, use uh, what they have created as an inspiration to write stories, to engage with, um, with these pupils um, in, uh, in Chios. Um, and they've got loads of great resources online. And I just want to show you this. I'm not sure if the audio works, but let's see if it works. So this is a, um, a, um, a song that they have created uh, that different pupils um, in uh, Chios have created. And as you can see, it's in multiple languages. And I think, uh, you know, this um, really troubling situation might be an opportunity for us though to also um, developed sort of a shared sense um, of, uh, of us being in this together and of us cherishing um, the, the, um, all the languages uh, that, that we have in this world even more by sort of accessing 
these resources uh, online. So let me just see if I can play this for you a little bit. <laughs> And as you can see, um, I'm afraid, given the time, I won't, um, uh, uh, we can't listen to this beautiful song uh, all together. But as you can see, after every time one of the pupils says, uh, sings one line in their mother, in their um, first language, then everybody repeats together. And this could be really a way for your pupils to then also sing this together. And you could also then get uh, pupils, um, to write a, a song like this and to include um, um, a sentence in their own, uh, in their first language. And it might be a way to engage uh, the, the, the families at home also to think about, oh, what could we say? You know, you could, you could have a theme uh, such as, for example, hope uh, or um, sharing or you know whatever theme that that you that you think would be most appropriate and you could have your pupils then uh, write the right sentences um, and share them and perhaps even record them um can i just interrupt judith just a minute okay so uh, another audio uh, source that i am i'm not sure if you've um, come across this song um i dare you by kelly clarkson and um, I'm going to just go like this and ask you, can you guess how many languages are in the song that I previously shown you? I'm gonna show you very quickly again. So you try and scan the, the lyrics in the song. Yes, and which are the languages? Let's see if you can see which languages there are. Eight, nine, seven, let's see. Let's see. Which languages have we got? English, yes. French, Spanish, German, yes. Arabic, and yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes, there is Hebrew. Hebrew is there as well. Yeah, really, really well spotted. So again, this is a song that, um, that you might uh, want to use uh, in your classrooms. And you also then have, so here you have the link and you then have also the different recordings that she has done um, with one other artist in, uh, in one language, or you have the version where they all sing together, the multilingual version, which is really, really inspiring and beautiful. And again, you could set a task where they try and find out what it means, and then you you gather together to um, to to uh, find out. Um, then another uh, way of going about um, using um, songs that I that I've uh, done now as we're in virtual space is to um, have a song. This is by Kulcha uh, Candele, "Schöne neue Welt." For those who don't speak German, it means "beautiful new world." And um, it's quite a fun song. And as you can see, there's some words that are in English. And um, this is particular, so I've, I've made this version for some of the pupils who struggle a little bit. And they've really just focused on trying to find these words um, whilst I've created a, a more complex version for uh, some of my more able pupils. And just here, another um, one of the one of many Spotify lists that have popped up now, which uh, there's one um, feel good uh, songs, for example, in German and uh, created uh, on Spotify, but I'm sure you can find many others um, that that might be of interest to you. Um, 
Another song that I've used uh, in the classroom and perhaps an idea of, of that has worked um, that might work also for you and now that we're um, teaching more in virtual space is um, as an example here by Crow, Einmal um die Welt, Once Around the World, where um, I got them to first think about what the, what the question actually is and how it translates into English. And this is really a good way to also deal with misconceptions and to get the pupils, I've had them in chat, then kind of thinking about, okay, so how would it be if it were in the present tense and how would it be um, um, if, if it were uh, in the future tense and so on. And um, why is this correct and why is this not correct and so on. So it might be a good way also to recycle um, some of your, um, some of your uh, different tenses and also to get some of the, what, what we um, uh, call grammar gossip going. So we're talking about, uh, language, about the grammar. Um, uh, which can be in very simple uh, ways or, or much more complex ones, of course. And then um, here, just to show you a little bit. So um, what, what I've done is to first show them um, the video, actually. So not this was a task that was done afterwards, because, of course, the question was, what did he do in the video? So like with films, um, like I was saying yesterday, you, could, you can do many tasks, of course, before uh, watching or listening. And this one though was specifically to do afterwards because my goal was actually not for them to watch the video. My goal was to revise the past tense that they had uh, pretty much forgotten after they had learned the future tense. I don't know if you are, sometimes have that as well, but it really, to, uh, with me, it, it often happens that suddenly they've, they've worked so much on the future tense, suddenly they don't remember the past tense. So this was a way to engage them and to kind of have them revise the past tense uh, a little bit. So I would show them first, um, I showed them uh, some of the pictures, they elicited some of the answers. Uh, and then, so I set it up like this, and I'll show you in a minute why, in order to then have them independently do the last activity. And the reason why I did this is, of course, to show them patterns, yeah? So the, the first one, the pattern with ge and ending in en, the next one with uh, fer, and then the last one with, um, with words with be, so, um, so that they would then have a bit more time after they had remembered those patterns to kind of discuss why it could be, why it could not be one, um, or uh, not, for example, not A, but B, or why not B, but C, and so on. Um, then another activity that might be of interest to you if you're, uh, if you're working on film, or if you're working on a, on a story, uh, or on a video, is to do a wanted poster. And this has worked really, really well uh, with my pupils before, where um, I'd sent them either, for example, a short clip, and they wouldn't see what come, came next, uh, or I would um, just give them uh, a little, um, like a little um, text, and then they had to come up with uh, what uh, this person looked like. And again, here you can also then um, use this as a really good way to, to think about stereotypes, to um, revise the descriptions, to kind of uh, tackle misconceptions and to have them do a creative project where they can um, do some, some writing and some drawing and then they can discuss with each other who they thought this was and why and so on. And then, of course, revising also opinions and justifications when they then decide, well, no, I thought uh, the person looked like this or looked like this because of this and this. Um, and it got a real debate going um, about um, this was for a, a villain in the story. And they all had um, opinions about uh, who this what this character would look like and so on. And um, then I also want to uh, point to some more resources that might be of interest to you. So one is a, um, um, a video that was made in Senegal that is actually now about COVID that might be of interest also to give a, a sort of a perspective from a French speaking country. Um, from another French speaking country. And then of course, um, a really beautiful uh, song 
by uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg. And again, here the picture could be used first um, to, to think about, well, what could this song be about? And, um, and then to, to get them to listen afterwards. I also want to point to a research that I mentioned yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you know the film Pachamama, um, but it's a really beautiful uh, uh, film that um, also has really beautiful music. And this um, song here, Somos la Nueva Tierra, is um, particularly close to my heart because it, um, it is a song that is sung in Spanish, but it actually also includes another language. Can you guess which other language it includes? Yes, Quechua, fantastic, yeah. It includes um, uh, in, at the end words in Quechua. And I thought that was a really beautiful way to also uh, engage uh, pupils in some cultural knowledge. And of course, you know, if you're teaching in, in primary, they might just focus on words like tierra and on counting out how many times they hear the word, or you, you might want to do some other activities um, um, that you that you usually do with songs um but i said the song is, is really beautiful and the, then the film of course is is really um fantastic as well and offers a uh, great insight not only into a beautiful story um, but also uh, into uh, giving people some more cultural knowledge and i've also um done um pachamama so the main character in pachamama and the sort of comparison with uh, the character of Mafalda and kind of looking at where they're both from. Of course, Mafalda um, originated the series in Argentina. So to kind of look at these two um, strong uh, female characters and, and uh, at um, what, what they are doing and, and uh, what they look like and what their interests are and their talents and so on. So that might be something that, that you might uh, enjoy. And here, uh, as I said, is the, the whole text. And as you can see, there's some parts that are really um, very simple. So um, another activity that I've done with another song was to then blank out the words and for pupils to write their own songs. And um, we then actually had them um, perform those. And of course, in, um, we're now not in a, in a physical classroom, but some of them might actually enjoy sort of performing these uh, at home then for their families or to engage their families and kind of singing along with them. It's a really catchy song, so you might like it. And on the, the notes of song, uh, I also I have a little activity for you now. So I'm going to show you a picture and I would like you to think about what you think you can see. OK, so look at the picture. On the left, where there are multiple people standing, what do you think it, um, they are, uh, the picture, what are they showing with their body? Uh, yes, it could be a, a, a tassa, yeah, or a teapot, yes. Fantastic, yes, a teapot. So uh, this is uh, una tetera, yeah. And this is a really, I don't know if you know this, um, this site, uh, Canta Juego, but they have loads of fantastic songs to get um, uh, pupils, but I, I have to say also me involved in doing actually some exercise. And it's really fantastic to kind of uh, uh, sing along and dance along. And um, similarly, um, on the website that I found Spanish Mama, you can find loads of, um, she's got loads and loads of resources also on film, um, but also on uh, videos sort of um, to, to get um, uh, people moving. And one is El Baile de los Animales. I don't know if you know that one, but that's also a really fun one, especially for younger uh, learners that they really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and then uh, riddles. Riddles might, is, are a good way to engage um, my pupils, I find. And so this is a first riddle where, um, of course, first you might get your pupils to do, to make a list of, uh, of parts of the body, and then you might slowly reveal uh, one sentence at a time. For example, and you could, of course, also set these rules. I, I sometimes do that. Uh, I'm a part of the body. Do you need 
an additional sentence to give you a clue? Or do you know already which part of the body I mean? Yes, please, okay. Yeah, so I give you another clue. I'm very important. Do you need another clue? Brain, good idea, but not correct. So I could now give you a minus points if I thought. No, not the eyes, I'm red. Heart, good idea, but I'm not the heart. Do you need an extra clue? Lips, good idea, no. Blood, good idea, I'm a muscle. So we had the, we discarded the heart already. The tongue, yes, fantastic. Yes, so as you can see, you could then have here pupils revised depending on, you know, you could choose a part of the body, you could choose a uh, free time activity or whatever, but I, I sometimes use this uh, sort of activity to kind of get uh, pupils to revise language and they and really enjoy making their own riddles and then sharing them. Uh, so I found that was quite a good way to get them engaged as well. Um, then here, a whole list, and I said all the slides will be shared, a whole list of um, uh, places where you can find resources with regards to film. So a big shout out, of course, to uh, the Goethe Institute, Institut Francaise, the Institut Cervantes, AWL has got loads of resources for their members. So um, in, with regards to film, but also loads of other resources. There is a German cinema podcast that I recently found. Um, of course, a big shout out also to um, the Film and Language Teaching Association. They have loads and loads of free study guides in loads of languages. Um, and I'm particularly delighted that they also have got Arabic uh, and Mandarin and Italian and Portuguese resources soon as well. Uh, Into Film, a really fantastic charity that offers loads of free resources uh, in terms of, um, uh, with regards to film um, uh, and languages, but also filmmaking and on, on loads of different subjects as well if you're teaching other subjects. Um, Linguascope has got uh, loads of uh, film guides as well. And then, um, I've also included some other uh, websites that have got loads of lists um, of films that are adequate for different age groups. And then also uh, the, uh, the BFI Screening Languages, their site, they've now, um, they've got loads of resources there as well. And there is um, a short course that they're offering. Um, it's uh, in collaboration with Future Learn, where you can uh, for free access their uh, course and learn more about the use of short film in language teaching. Um, and I don't know if you know, Onati Productions, they have been also really busy in creating um, uh, sh uh, sort of short videos. Um, also, this one uh, came across recently where there is uh, every day there is one question and it's really at the moment they're, they're of course, uh, discussing, for example, uh, COVID and they make it in a really simple and accessible way, um, sort of relevant um, sort of short um, uh, videos. Uh, Roca Lingua is another one that might be of interest to you. Um, another one that I recently came across is this one um, by um, um, uh, Blah Blah, uh, Hablamos, uh, Abla, I, I think it's Abla, Hablamos uh, SC, but I've included the link here. And they've created these little short episodes um, where there's also then a, a little quiz um, to get uh, pupils engaged in kind of uh, an activity to carefully listen and watch. And they've also got these really lovely little texts. Uh, for example, this one here is Tatiana and she's from Colombia. Um, and I've used these sort of short little texts to then create little resources where I've blanked out words or um, where I uh, asked them to translate parts or uh, where there were different, uh, where I split the sentences and they had to put the different sentences together, things like this that might be of interest to you. Um, also, Captain Blaube, for those who are teaching German, there are loads of resources there um, to listen, to, to view, and lots of games as well, and lots of uh, resources that you can create at home. 
Uh, loads of resources also here. Um, Goldsmiths has done a, a project with uh, Positive Messenger project. Um, again, there's really loads of resources here um, that are language specific, but also wider projects. Um, the London Migration Film Festival is offering loads of films for free to, to view at the moment. Um, the Indigenous Languages Short Film Festival has more than 80 films um, from uh, the Caribbean and Latin America, short films that might be of use, particularly, for example, for Key Stage 5, to get them to uh, sort of um, improve their uh, language, but also their cultural knowledge and to get them intrigued about different cultures. Um, and then also uh, Chios Voices that I mentioned before, there's a really lovely video that uh, uh, Hamudi Yugi created. And um, it's a, a sort of stop motion video. And this little character goes around the city and, and kind of talks to different people. And uh, it's a really uh, fun activity to kind of count how many languages and this little fellow um, um, listens to. Uh, over the course of the uh, of the journey, so it's also a really fantastic way to kind of think about um, language learning more generally. Um, I, I think. Um, also, if you are keen on having your pupils making a short uh, videos at home, I can really recommend a project I collaborated with um, on last year, Connecta, in um, uh, collaboration with. Um, uh, University of Oxford uh, multilingualism project. Um, we've created loads and loads of um, um, guides in different languages on how to make uh, short films and it's really it's a collection of um, guides that will follow you through from thinking about an idea, making a storyboard, uh, to then actually shooting your film and even editing your film. And what I think is really important to mention here is that everything that is in those guides, it's in the different languages, but it's also all the um, uh, resources and all the software is also accessible for free. Because I think that's really something that we must remember that not all our pupils will have access always to a computer. I found that some of my pupils actually need to use the phone to access their resources. Um, so all those resources are available online and can be used on a phone. And so can Stop Motion Studio, which is also available for free. And that works really brilliantly on a phone. I've used that with uh, pupils in primary, secondary, and in higher education. And it's really simple to make. Uh, also a big shout out to Interfilm. They, use, um, they have a free uh, film club uh, for state funded schools. Um, and they, perhaps this might be something to consider uh, for, um, the once we're back in the physical classroom, to my, you might want to set up a club and they provide all the films for free and send them to you so that you can use them with your, um, with your pupils. And then they do a fantastic festival uh, where um, they have com competitions like writing a film review and things like that, which is not language specific, but you might kind of use that idea or you might have your pupils sort of write something uh, also in English and then in different languages languages and they do a festival where they then bring some of the projects together and then pupils are invited to this beautiful venue in central London um, to, to watch a film and, and engage in a film experience together. Um, another project that I want to mention to you, uh, the Multilingual Digital Storytelling Project by one of my dear colleagues, uh, Vicky McElroy. And she has, if you follow the link uh, here to her resources, you can see examples of the amazing projects that she has done with uh, creating multilingual digital stories with uh, pupils from um, the UK, but also from overseas, for example, from Cyprus and Taiwan in different languages. And there are some examples um, on the website that are free to use um, and that might inspire uh, you to create uh, some research or to, for your pupils to, to watch. Um, you could also have done this before as well to create, to ask uh, pupils to create a, a tomatrope. And this is sort of how you can make it and they can then kind of move it and uh, write a little story about this or tell a little story. Um, it's quite a fun way to engage them. Uh, or to do a board animation or an experimental one if you have some pasta um, at home um, that you might, um, that, that pupils might want to use. 
uh, or here um, a little bit of a biscuit and so to create some sort of uh, pictures and to to write about them um, or to discuss them other projects that I've seen that are uh, by uh, somebody um, who used the name Annoying Birdie, I thought those were great ideas to do some creative projects that would then really work well to uh, a storytelling projects or also um, I've made sort of a little project like this where the with the plates, but I've actually used that in conjugation. So then the pupils had it as a, as a picture and then they had to figure out which ones and uh, work together as plates. And that may, might may be something that you uh, might like to, to use. Or as you can see in the middle of the castle, I'm sure you can spot a toilet roll um, loops here so they can be used in uh, creative ways. Um, another one here, I, the, this is not a, a really language specific, but the Levy Little Theatre is doing a story swap. And I just, when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is such a great idea. This could be really something uh, to, that, that might be something to do also in your, in your school, uh, where they write their own uh, two to four minute script, uh, poem or sketch, uh, based on the theme of isolation. And the uh, Levy Little Theatre still accepts stories as well. So if you want them to do a project perhaps where they write a little bit in English and then in the target language, that could be a way to go about it. And then um, just a little, I've also found this website here where there's loads of little projects. And I thought this was just so great because it allowed then uh, for a little speech bubble and, and for some text to be written and to be shared. And this is the uh, website that I, that I discussed just briefly before. Uh, I came across this, I don't know if you know this uh, thing link, but I'm just creating resources there. It's really simple to use and basically you can have one picture and then where you see those round circles, you can actually then uh, add hyperlinks there or text or actually even sound files. And then the pupils basically click on it and then a little window opens and allows you to um, look at, uh, for example, um, uh, Stonehenge or it might allow you to, um, uh, might allow your pupils to listen to something you recorded and so on. So it's a, it's a free uh, website to use if you have Microsoft Office. And um, it, it's, it's for me, who's not uh, such a, um, as to, as new to the site, I found it really easy to use. Um, Rebecca Jankowski, I don't know if you know her, but she's shared loads of resources which uh, I've really enjoyed using on tongue twisters and, and uh, recipes and so on. So that might be something that uh, you might like to use. And she's been really so kind to share uh, those resources as well. Um, then the British Red Cross, I don't know if you know this about this initiative and that I thought could also be something that might inspire you in your classrooms. They have these new think resources, but also a kindness calendar, which I thought was such a beautiful idea. Um, and I thought this could be really something to use um, with our pupils as well. Um, and then another shout out to some uh, competitions. Um, so uh, Susie Buell has, has got this uh, poetry competition that is still ongoing. So you might like to encourage your pupils to, um, to take part. Uh, then the Stephen uh, Spender Prize is uh, for poetry is also um, currently going on. And then there is also the Goethe Institute um, is also doing a, um, uh, or on the Goethe Institute site, I found this and um, this uh, movie prize, uh, the audience award for music videos, and you might like to join that as well and engage in that. That's currently running as well. Uh, Brilliant Publication has got loads of audio resources as well now available that I've seen. Um, I also found this, which I thought was really interesting, a drawing challenge for kids by Adventure in a Box. And I just thought those could be really sort of resources that might be useful um, to adapt also um, sort of to make a little list of, of tasks that um, uh, pupils could do uh, and to translate some of those ideas into um, another language in your target language and then to kind of have them do uh, some of those uh, creative tasks. Um, at home. And here, as promised, uh, just loads of resources um, of um, short videos, uh, trailers, and or um, also longer films and lists 
of uh, films that are available. These ones particularly um, are uh, with due attention to those that are available virtually at the moment because of course um, uh, I, I think many of us have difficulties kind of getting resources otherwise. So we've got for French, um, Spanish and German some lists um, that you might like to use. And I said in the uh, webinar yesterday, which you can also find on the site where you can find the resources for this webinar, there's more on, on the use of film that I've shared that might be of interest to you. And finally, just some additional resources to uh, language activities, for example, also by the BBC. I know they're creating loads of resources as well, but you might want to engage uh, with the British Council. It's got some uh, really lovely uh, resources on, for example, on short stories. Uh, and then there's some more resources that I found um, that you might want to uh, engage with that might be uh, useful. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening. I'd like to thank again um, Helen for inviting me and Joe Dale um, for, for um, inviting me as well and uh, to Linguascope, to AWL London as always and to you all for, for hopefully um, having a, a good time and thank you for listening, thank you for making time. Thank you ever so much Judith, that was fantastic um, and in fact as so often happens in these, when people ask questions, other people are answering. You've got lots and lots of thanks coming to you that your way there. Um, can I suggest that while everybody's here, it'd be great if Judith, you stop sharing your screen and people can all open their webcams or open their audio and we can give a proper round of applause as we would do in a real conference. So that would be really, really good. We'll get ourselves all ready. Yay! Have you stopped showing your screen? Then we can get everything on Thank there. You so much. <laughs> I think you still. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so now we've got all of these pictures. So if you could all open your um, audio or open up your video, whatever you're happy to open up, and then we can give a nice round of applause. Okay. Ah, thank you. Yay! Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I think um, one of the, you know, just so, just a mine of information there. Um, and it was lovely to see that other people were joining in as well. Um, so you would spark off ideas for other people to add things. Uh, the main question I think was, where could people have access to the links, which are obviously in organized this really well. So I'm wondering if people could um, now turn their audio off. Having applauded, that'd be great. At the moment with the stairs rolling down. Oh no, we're okay. Uh, is I can just, uh, would you like me to just copy the link to where the resource can be found into the that chat? Would, that would be brilliant, yes. Yeah. And then we'll put that on the website. What I do is that AWL London has got um, a webinar page um, and there there'll be a link and we'll just have an entire page just devoted to Judith and this particular <laughs> webinar so on that you'll have um a, a repeat of the description about who judith is but also a link to the recording and i will download the chat um so that and we'll put this as a there we go there we have it so that's come across it hasn't come across as a live link but you would copy and paste that but we'll certainly make that available on the um on the webinar yeah, and then you can just download it, and uh, and then when you click on it, then all the research, uh, all the links should work, and the long list of the the films is then on the final pages. But please do get in touch, and if you want to leave any feedback, I'm always really grateful to hear uh, what you enjoyed, but also what you'd like me to perhaps um, uh, talk about another time, or what didn't work, and and how to think about it, and what we could improve, and so on. Mm -hmm. No, I just think it's given us loads of ideas and this is what so happens so often happens in these webinars is that people go away and try things out and Joe do you want to um, advertise webinars that are coming up uh, yes lovely um, so we've got um, Ranga the trainer or uh, Darren White tomorrow talking about 
Google Meet and Google Classroom. He's a real expert around all things Google. He's been doing lots of uh, webinars in the last couple of weeks. And so that's going to be a real treat. And then we have the show and tell on Saturday, uh, which we started advertising uh, today. So if you are wanting to show some uh, good practice, something that you've been doing in the last couple of weeks, we would absolutely love to see it. Um, you'd have between sort of four and five minutes each. And if you're happy to be recorded, that's great. If you don't want to be recorded, we can pause the recording as we did um, today. So don't feel obliged that uh, we, we we will record you. If you don't want to be recorded, that's absolutely fine. But we would love to see lots of people sharing uh, all the amazing uh, things you've been doing because um, obviously we've been putting on these webinars, hopefully inspiring you with lots of ideas. And we'd love to see how you're putting these ideas into practice as well as obviously your own ideas as well. That'd be amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's Saturday night. Fantastic. Okay. So thank you ever so much, Judith, for your offer as well, that we can feed back to you any more ideas we'd like or how we get on with it. I looked and I was collect seeing if there were any questions. There was one question which said, could you explain that again? But by the time I saw it, I couldn't see what it was. So that person, I think, could get in touch with you in individually and would have the opportunity to, to be able to watch the, the video again. Yeah, of course. So, uh, oh, some people have asked questions there. Um, oh, Vincent's asked a question. Does Helen S have a video background or are you on the beach? This is what we need to know. <laughs> Helen Stokes, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Great. These I'm folks. at home. <laughs> You're at home, are you? <laughs> okay, so I think I'll, I'll stop the recording now unless there's anything um, anybody else wishes to ask before we... Um, before we do so but you'll you'll see you'll be able to see the chat and you'll be able to see all of the enthusiasm all the way through and the thing in particular judith as well you were also demonstrating how to conduct something online the way that you managed to engage with your questions and ever so slightly competitive sometimes in trying to get <laughs> the, the answers in so thank you ever so much thank you and apologies for the slight sort of troubles with the the uh no but th but that is <laughs> what this is about isn't it it is finding out Absolutely. and i noticed that oliver hopwood um it'd be fine if you um would like to show yourself and just talk us through how we do the bit about the screen because i must say i'm not very clear always when you've got that double screen yes exactly yeah so, and yeah. he mentioned that that's something which um he tell tells people about and he was writing about it. so anybody who's got ideas about that that would be great